certainly one of the most long-anticipated cameras here at Photokina is the new Canon 5D Mark II. Three years after the original 5D, which was really the first affordable full-frame SLR, this is a major update in virtually every parameter. From the outside, it looks very similar. The outside dimensions, the bulk, the weight is really identical, but there are some styling changes and a number of changes to the user interface. Looking at it from the front, one of the most obvious styling changes is the pentaprism cover. The original 5D kind of mirrored the, uh, the design language of the 1D series with more of a rounded cover. This one's a little more chiseled and angular. Looking from the front of the camera, we see three holes over here underneath the logo. That's the microphone grill. Under the hand grip, we also see a little red window that's for the IR remote. It uses the popular RC1 remote, and this is the first time we've seen an infrared remote on a Canon EOS camera other than a Rebel. On the top of the camera, the buttons on the right have been rearranged and regrouped slightly. We have a modification to the mode dial, mode dial in the same place, but with some different options on it we'll talk about in a moment. The hot shoe on the camera looks the same as that on the 5D, but this one now has some splash proof capability. When you use it with the 580EX2 flash, the combination is splash proof. The 5D Mark II overall has been considerably enhanced in terms of its environmental ceiling. It's not nearly to the level of a 1D series camera, but it's quite a bit ahead of where the 5D was. When you shoot with the 5D Mark II, one of the first things you notice is the huge viewfinder. It's actually only slightly larger than that on the 5D, but if you're not accustomed to working with the full frame camera, it's really an amazing view. The other thing that's very nice is the very short viewfinder blackout time when you're shooting continuous mode. I don't know what the official spec is, but it's much shorter than it was on the 5D. It's very obvious when you're shooting in continuous mode. Despite the relatively high price point, a lot of amateur shooters are buying the higher end SLRs now. Recognizing this, Canon has tried to make the user interface both simpler and more flexible. One of the ways they've done that is by adding the creative auto mode that I mentioned briefly in, when talking about the mode dial. It's marked with a CA on the mode dial. What it does is gives you the ease of use of an automatic camera, but the ability to adjust some settings. In full auto mode, you can control only the image size and quality and the shooting mode, whether single frame, continuous, or self timer. Switching to creative auto, though, we pick up a few additional controls. We still have the drive mode and the image size and quality, but now we also pick up picture styles and we can adjust the exposure and depth of field. This is interesting. It's basically giving you an aperture priority mode, but expressed in terms that an amateur would understand, ranging from the background being blurred to being sharp. Another new addition to the mode dial are the three user custom modes. These let you configure the camera however you like and then record those settings so you can return to them with just a turn of the mode dial. Like many current SLRs from both Canon and their competitors, the 5D Mark II has a live view mode that lets you flip up the mirror and then displays on the rear panel LCD whatever the sensor is seeing. Unlike most live view cameras though, the 5D Mark II lets you record that live view as high definition video. It uses a 1080p format, that means 1080 lines of vertical resolution by 1920 horizontal, but it's at 30 frames per second rather than the 60 frames per second that's the official 1080p spec. A unique feature of the 5D Mark II's high def video recording is that it not only records sound through the camera's built in microphone, there's a standard mic input jack to accept a stereo input. Now, while it offers high definition video recording, the 5D Mark II is by no means a camcorder. It will record to a maximum of 4 gigabytes of file size or 29 minutes and 59 seconds of elapsed time, whichever comes first. Canon tells us that shooting a standard test target meant to represent typical subjects, high def recording will continue for a maximum of about 12 minutes, standard def for about 24 minutes. Of course, the spec that grabs everybody's attention first is the huge resolution on the 5D Mark II. It's 21.1 megapixels compared to 12.8 on the original 5D. The original 5D was no slouch, but 21.1 megapixels is a huge increase. This is the same pixel pitch on the sensor as the 1DS Mark III, but there's been some improvements made to the sensor beyond what the 1DS Mark III has. They've re-engineered the cell layout to increase the active area of each pixel. They also now have gone to gapless micro lenses so that the micro lenses cover the entire active imaging area, allowing it to gather more light. Furthermore, the RGB, the red, green, blue color filters, have been made more transparent, allowing more light to strike the sensor. The net result of this is that the ISO sensitivity range of the 5D Mark II runs from 50 all the way up to 25,600, 
with the native level capping out at 6,400. With 21 megapixels, you don't necessarily need all that resolution all the time. So another new feature on the 5D Mark II is a variable RAW mode, where you can actually shoot RAW at either 21 or roughly 10 megapixels or approximately 5 megapixels. So that concludes our quick look at the Canon 5D Mark II. It'll be available in stores in early November. Check out our site for more information, a little more detailed preview, and of course come back for our full test results when we get our hands on a production level model. Thank you.